first of all how once you are inside your mysql the first thing you should check are all the databases you have and how do we know the databases in which we have right so to know all the database we have you say show data basis is either you use the word show databases or you use the word show schemas any of them we do the same thing schemas uh, really uh, okay schemas uh -huh. so any of those two command we do the work so now if you look at some of these databases we, we are actually the ones i was using to practice that's why i see my own i have many <laughs> plenty databases here so you can see that whole batting is one of them is one of the databases so just like i say i say this example we alex gave right they were making use of a database called whole batting so now it means what you first need to do is to create that database how do you create a, a database it's just simply create database right whole bar team and then use your semicolon now of course mine will not work why because already already have the database already so that's why it won't work but if i want to remove the database now it's just for me to say drop whole button and then have an error is it drop drop i was thinking it's drop is it drop or delete let me try delete and see but i was thinking it's supposed to be drop okay drop data base let me try this one whole button yes okay actually it's drop database whole button and not just drop whole button so now you see if we now say show data basis let's see now you can see that we no longer have whole button so first of all we need to create whole button how do we create a database remember we say create data base then what is the name of the database whole button then semicolon now why you always use semicolon is that if you don't include your semicolon the, the semicolon is more like end of your statement so when you don't include it in mysql mysql we assume that you have other maybe you have additional statements you want to add to this statement so so now we now have our whole button database right now the next thing they now say we should create uh tables called users now you can only create a table under a database and then of course they want us to create this table users under the whole button database so it means that we have to switch to this database now how do you switch switch to a database you use the word use then the name of the database of course in this case the name of our database in which we want to use is whole button right so here you get a response that database changed so now we are now fully we, we now know that okay the database we are operating on now is whole button so you now say write a sql script that creates a table users following this requirement with this attribute id they gave us all we, are, we need to use email they gave us the properties name they gave us the properties then look at what they say if the table already exists your script should not fail right your script can be executed on any database so here now whenever you see they tell you that if you are creating a table you should create a table in such a way if the table exists it shouldn't return an error it simply means that in your statement of creating the table you should always include if not exists you understand like we can say create table users if not exist you understand so now it means that if it's that table will only be created if it does not exist if it exists the statement will not execute so in that case you can't have an error so that is what this is all about so now if you look at how does a table looks like to begin with because one thing with me is that in my learning i like to visualize things to make them look real now you know your table you know if you have a table you can have column you know you have rows right uh permit me let me let me use this table diagram so that to explain it good so you know if you have a table 
good i don't know if this one is so you can see that we have call you have rows like this is row one this is row two this is row three and then each of these one we have column this is column one this is column two this is column three like that and then in our table this heading part of our table you know is being called field right so now also in my sql anytime you are creating a table is mandatory to create the table with these fields you are seeing here and as you are creating it with the fields you are going to give each property its own field for instance if you look at this one as it is of course you know here is a text here too is text that's why the fact you are seeing number the same thing here the same the same here too is probably text right so it's the same thing too for this one they are not saying we should create so now our statement will be now that create right table users if not exist so just like i tell you this if not exist is to to like so that to uh, to take uh, control of this so that we, not, we are not going to have any issue of the script uh, failing as a result of whatsoever so we have create table users if not exist so now the next thing we will not define the field that's this field here this one i show you this first row carrying the heading of what each of the column represents that's what we have to now do now if you look at what we have here the first one the first attribute they gave us is id so it means at first what we have is id now what is this id this id they say is an int one secondly they say it's never null so it means it's not null thirdly they say it's auto increment so auto underscore increment next they now say and is a primary key primary key now if you like right you can decide to declare it as primary key after the whole thing but me i find it much more better to always define the primary key alongside the this thing so now we are done with this id next is our email now you use comma and then permit me to move to the next line right so now we now have i don't know why this one is like this uh this bracket is not supposed to permit me let me let me restart the statement and create if dot exist yes then i'll put bracket here good open bracket then i have id i'll remove this one uh -huh. good so we are done with id the next one is our email now we have email and then what should this email they said the email is a string and you know how you define string on on in my sql is using varchar so we have var char now varchar of how many characters 255 characters and then they say should never be null so we have not null and then they say it should be unique so we have unique comma then what is the next field the next field is name so we have name and then name two is a string so we have vacha and then what is the character of vacha 255 so i think that's it so i think that's that's it for for our table yes that's it for our table so i'll just close it with this bracket and then since we have reached we have gotten to the end of our statement we now introduce our semicolon and press enter so let me see what are they saying you have an error on your sql syntax check the manual that corresponds to your sql server version for your right syntax to use near if not exist so okay that means where the issue is is probably this if not exists should come before table users it create table if not exists then users then you have this so now okay we have we have done what he asked us to do right so from here now they say echo select this from users so of course since we we are not using uh, a script we are just coding it directly on our command line 
right so we don't need to like actually pass because what they are doing here is to pipe the command through that particular uh the command of the table through that particular database so already we were already in the database assistance here so we just need to to do the command enter the command directly so we say select select star from users so what we are saying here is that select everything from the table users so let's enter of course you see it's showing empty and why is it showing empty because we just created the table we have not actually added any information to the table so if you look at what they are doing here this was where they now started inserting values right into the table so they ran this one first so of course you know the syntax insert into the name of the table users what are we inserting email and name because if you look at id here right why you don't need to specify id is because already id is auto increment and is primary key so it means for every value you are entering by itself id will be increasing and you can have the same you can have different uh, information having the same id B because why because of it's being given as a primary key so we enter this one you see one row affected so now we can now check back with this our command select hash from users let's see if our record has been entered so you can see id1 email this name this which is exactly what is being entered here so you can also enter the rest this is the second one also right hey camille <laughs> sorry yes then the third one so you can see they are saying a duplicate entry why because of initially i entered the same email already the first time so trying to enter it the second time if you remember when we are defining our table we defined the email as unique so when you define a field as unique it means you can only have one particular kind of value in that table and as i see this one was rejected why he's saying duplicate entry bob at dylan.com for key users dot email so that's why i see showing that duplicate entry so if we are to view everything all the records now it's just for us to use the keyword select hash this select means you are selecting everything from users so you can see if you like you can decide to select only id if you want to select only id you can just say select id from users and then you have only the id if it's just the email you need you can say select email from users if it's id and email you need you can say select id comma email from users so that is how that select works why if you want to select everything use this star this star will simply like select everything in the table and return it back to you so i don't know if anybody have any question so i don't know are you people comfortable with us coding it on the direct my sql uh, terminal or we should create files and do it inside a file just like how alx said we should do um is it possible we actually do this okay or, we... um this one actually okay we do the two run it we run it the script and then we see it actually reflects all... And gets. all right no problem we can do that so now for this first one we just did let me open the second part of my terminal right so let me increase this one and then let me just create a folder uh, sorry mkdir and then let me say pld ah, okay cd pld right so for this first one now they said the name of the file we should use is one dash country dot sql so i'm going to a eh, sorry is this actually <laughs> So then I'm going to vim into it. And then okay. Yes. So now of course ALX say this one should always contain our comment. So I'll just use comment. Don't mind me. Yes. So now in now say based on what they said here, write SQL that creates a table. Of course, we say create right, create 
table if not exist then what is the name of the table they say is users isn't it and then we now have this so the first one now it says id right so id and then the id they say is int and then it's never null so we have not null and then also it's auto in increment so we have auto underscore increment right so yes increment and then they say it's primary key so we have primary key comma then the next field they say is email and then this email string they say is vacha right and the vacha is 255 and then that one too they say is never null so we have not null and then they say the value is unique so we have unique comma then the next one we have name and then this name we have vacha right and then this vacha it has 255 so and then lastly we close our bracket then don't forget to always put this one to mark the end of your sql statement so once you have done this it's just for you to save now coming to this place now right we now copy this now before you even run this one make sure you have changed your database to whole batting right so if i do and how do you do that you first go to your sql right and then from here you say use whole batting database change so you can now exit then let's now run our code now this one will copy this now because me what i'm using is i just want to use my root so i'll put sudo at the front of my sql so that i can just use my sudo password to always run it so you can see what we have why is not showing empty here is because we already have the table already you understand we have the table already that's this one we this the command we entered through here has already created the table for us here so that's why you see we are we are having this record if not it shouldn't have given us any record unless of course we we'll drop uh the table and yeah. so let me see drop table users so good so now let's rerun it you see that this time around it will just return an empty you see access the okay sorry 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 it's supposed to be sudo yes so you can see table hobarting.users doesn't exist because of truly it does not exist and yeah, i've removed it so if we run this one now this next command sudo now this next command is that we are running the script and if you look at the code containing the script is the code that is supposed to create the table so by us running this code like this what is going to do is that it's going to create the table you understand this one look at it as though you know what cat does cat exposes what is inside the document so it's more like you are exposing what is inside here the sql code you are exposing it to my sql exactly what we are doing here you know this is a direct my sql this is the my sql uh, interpreter so by dropping our code here my sql will interpret it so that's exactly what is happening here but this time around we are just piping it so by using cat everything inside here will be exposed and then it will be piped into my sql so that is what is actually happening here so by doing this we're actually running the script so now the table has been created so next what do we do we start inserting into the table so me i always use sudo at the front of this so that i'm using my sudo password i don't have time to be creating special password for root user so this first record i've entered then the sec the next one too this one to sudo it sudo and then then the next one sudo it so you can see because of here we have already entered this email in this place already so that's why here is telling us that we cannot use the email for another person again because why we identify if you look at the, the this thing uh, uh, this thing the content of our this thing we identify email to be unique so you can't have one email appearing two times 
because we define email to be unique so so that's why you are seeing this error then finally to see everything that is inside the table we do this so you can see id one email bob at dialand.com name bob to this then silver so uh, i don't know is there any question i think this is even more of like a revision or so any question before we proceed okay so i think we can proceed now so the second one now we have so the second one says write a sql script that creates a table users of course we have you have to create a table again for users following this requirement with this attribute so we have id we have email we have name and we have country but this time around this country now they say is enumeration so uh if if you understand what uh although we are supposed to do enums in c in fact, that's one of the topic I used to uh, wonder why uh, didn't ALX include it in our curriculum. But, well, I guess maybe it's due to the fact that uh, it's not of, maybe it's not really of use per se. That's what I'm suspecting. Uh -huh. But it's part of C, enums. That's enumerations. Uh, supposed to be part of what the teachers were. Well, anyways, so ALX knows the best. So now, I think instead of we running it through here let's just be running the script so that we will not take much time now running both at the same time what do you guys think yeah, yeah i feel uh -huh. so good can now, do it anyway anyways uh-huh so now because of here right if you remember we already created a user table here so now here they are telling us to create another user table so the best thing to do in order for you not to get an error in running all this code because it's the same users users we have to drop this first user table so it's just for you to come you know how to drop it that's delete it drop simply means delete it's just for us to come here and say drop table users and then we have dropped it so that we will not have any issues running this code so now the name of this file is this right so i'll copy it and then i'll vim into it so of course this is comment the comment is supposed to be here so now it says write the sql script that creates a table users following this requirement of course this is the requirement we'll still come to it you know say if the table already exists your script should not fail so you remember this one how we are we are able to achieve this so we say create a table right if not exist then what's the name of the table users right then next line i will open this my bracket now the first attribute they say the table should have is what an id so we have id now this id is what an integer so we have int it is what never know so we have not not it's what auto increment so we have auto underscore increment is what and a primary key so we have primary key comma now the next field is what we have email and this email has string of what 255 i will know string is being represented in my sql as vacha so we have 255 right and then the next one they say never know so we have not know and then lastly unique so the value is supposed to be unique comma the next field is what name and they say name has a string of 255 characters so we have var char 255 comma the next one is what we have country now this country they say is enumerations of countries and whether in C O, because I told you guys that there's also enumerations in C. Whether in C or in in MySQL, the way of declaring enumerations is enu. Use the word enu. Then inside a bracket, you have each of the values. Now, 
if you look at it each of these values are actually string as well they are not numbers if they are like numbers then would have maybe we'll have something like this right but they are actually enumeration of strings so for that sake we'll have now if you look at what they say here right they now say us co so we have us we have co and we have uh tn close the bracket now look how they say never null that's equals to default will be the first element of the enumeration so one property of enumeration of mysql is that like the default in a situation where you put not null what will happen is that any table that the person did not enter country by default us is going to be used because what it means by enum here is that this country this uh, field country will be expecting either us either co or tn but in a situation where the person do not even put anything at all he did not put tn he did not put co he did not put us in that situation it will default to the first value on the table that's why you see here they say default will be the first element of the enumeration here us so that's why we are putting us as the first because in a situation where is null right it will always default to the first value of the enumeration we are here here let's say we should make it our us so now of course they say it should not be null so we we'll put not null so when a situation where you do not put not null if somebody should put null in this field it's going to take the null value like that but once you put not null once the person leaves out the country value in his entry it will default to the first value of the enumeration which is in this case us so that is what you just need uh, to know about this then of course we close our bracket then don't forget your semicolon to mark the end of your sql statement so of course we we'll save our script and then from here we we'll start running it so i'll run this and then sorry let me use sudo so you see table all button does users doesn't exist why we just wrote the script so to for us to create the table we have to first what we have to uh, uh, run our script and we have not run our script yet so the second command will be the, what we now run our script for us which is this so i'll paste it i'll use sudo then we have one three zero okay so now we have run the script so it means automatically our table has been created so next command now we will now insert your inserting information into our script so you see for this one they specified us for the enum which is the third value we are expecting so I'll use sudo good now the next one which is this one you can see what they use is co sudo then the next one now if you look at this one what they use is fr so let's see what is going to show us if you remember among the values of enumeration let me cut what we have so that you see it among the value of enumerations we only have us co and tn but if you look at here we are now they announced putting fr now because fr is not among this this by running this what we should get should be an error where is it this it should be an error why fr is not among the values we are expecting here so let me run it so that you see what i'm trying to say so run it here then we'll do our sudo one three zero three so you can see data truncated for column country at row one so you can see it so because this one is not among the enumeration values we are expecting so let's look at the next one sudo now you can see that this one they do not even put value for enumeration that's country they do not even put any value on that they just put only the email and then the name so but anyways let's still run it and see now you see it still worked so this one now is to print out everything on the table So now you can see that for this first one, yes, 
actually they use where is it they use us which is this us for this second one they use co where is it co but for this third one you can see that they did not even use anything it's just email and name but if you remember because of what we declared in our code where we put that it, the, the, this thing the code is not null right so that's why you see that it will always default to the first value in the enumeration which in this case is us that's why here we are having us so so i don't know uh, if there is any any question is there any question before we move on all right so everybody is quiet wait but hope i'm safe huh? everybody is just quiet too <laughs> no question okay 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 talk. thank god dude. anytime people are quiet <laughs> like this it it means two things yeah, he don't know question or hmm, it's as if it's only this boy that knows what he's doing oh. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah you, you know there can be stances like that of course of yeah. course so let's let's look at this next one so this one says write a sql script that ranks country origins of bands ordered by the number of non-unique fans so of course this one the requirements they gave us uh, an sql a table dump now anytime you see they say table dump right it's just like an information a like an already an existing table data an already existing table data so that's just what table dump means so they have given us an already existing table data here so it will now be left for us right to now run it through you can see here this first command is to run it through our database so that we are going to have that table on our database so uh, that is what uh, they did here first of all so now let's look at requirements what did they say we should do import the table dump so they want us to import this first so what you need to do is to first of all download it so once you download it then you now um you now uh i wanted to say on compress it uh, how did they to say it in english self i don't forget extract thank you so you have to extract it now i've already downloaded it so let me i'm coming let me come to my download folder i think it should be here if i'm not mistaken Hey God, help me. Uh -huh, good. So this is it. Melter bands, right? And I extracted it into in, in fact I can't even find it here. So but let me extract it again. So I'm going to extract. And then uh where is the extracted? Where is the extracted? Good. Look at the extracted. Metal underscore bands dot sql. So I'll copy it to where this my folder is. Because this my folder is under home, inside home, then PLD. So I'll copy it there. This is home. This is PLD. So I'll paste it here. Now, I will advise you, because when I was doing my task, I included it inside my code. When I was trying to push, because this one is more than 100. Uh, if you look at it, it's more than 100, uh, this thing, by size. I don't know. I don't know how GitHub did it, but I was not able to push it. To my github so i had to like add it among my git ignore so what i now what i did was i just look at it look at the name here better bands.sql so i just created a git ignore vim i did vim dot git ignore and then inside i now included it metal bands dot sql so that you will not have issues pushing your code yeah, because me I had issues putting my code when I wanted to push everything alongside this one so the first thing we need to do first is to even import the table now how do we import this is the command to import right so yeah what am I doing like this sorry I think I did not copy it properly good so I'll just sudo so for information that are much at times you need to wait ahead okay thank god this one you don't even waste time so now we have imported it so we have fulfilled one of the things they say we should do now they say column names must be origin and mb dash fans your script can be executed on any database now first of all we need to even check right what is the structure of this sql we are going to work with what is even the structure 
we need to check now of course here we are using a uh, whole button already so we can say um, show tables right so you can see we have meta bands now among a list of table inside our whole button so we can now say select hash from meta bands so this statement is like we want to see the table meta bands everything in the table uh, i don't know why this one is appearing this way no problem let's just open the my the my sql the file straight direct and see good now why i say let us open it right is because anytime you are working with a table it's always best to see all the fields in the table that will really help you to understand what you are supposed to do and how you are supposed to do it much more better so you can see that in this our table metal bands we have id we have band name we have fans we have formed and that form is a year probably the year it was created we have origin which is uh, of, of course a string we have split probably the year this the the band splitted and then we have style right which is also a string and then the primary key is id so now let's go back so let's see this is where we are going to code this second one so we'll zoom into it and then comment yes so here we have imported it they now say column names must be origin and what nb fans i see it write the sql script that rank ranks country origin of bands ordered by the number of non unique fans so can anybody uh, give us an idea what are we supposed to do Um. <laughs> somebody, somebody is laughing. Okay, basically, link. Okay, um, from the meta bands, right? Um, the origin and then the number of fans here is what we are. No, 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 no. We are going to be creating two columns: the origin and then the NB of fans, basically, right? Cool. And they said the number of fans, right, yeah. is non-unique, basically, yeah. right? So I think we are going to be getting the data from the meta bands um tables that have tables. Put on good. There. good so now let me open the table again so that we'll analyze it one more time now look at it if you look at you find out that there's actually nothing like nb bank fans we have origin if you look at the table this is the table right this is origin that one is certain but we don't have anything like nb bands if you look if you check and here they say nb bands but look at what they say Write the SQL script that ranks country origins of bands ordered by number of fans. Right? So NB now they are they are taking NB as number of fans. So let's now check. Look at fans here. I see are you seeing fans? And then fans is in int. I don't know if if, if you guys are getting it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it means that one number of fans. This is where we can get it. We can get it from fans. Right? So, now, of course, if they are telling you number of fans, it means they want everything. Look at it. They do not say numbers of fans. They say number of fans. So, they want you to give them every number of fans. By, as a result, using the origin. That's what they want, right? So now let's look at how does that origin looks like. So this is origin, right? And then is vacha, which is one, two, three, four, five. So let's check one, two, three, four, five. So it means the origin is the country, right? So what they are trying to say in essence is that now, like the United States, like if you look at this one. Sorry, why do I keep on making this again? So if you look at the United States now. They want them they want uh, you to give them all the number of fans in the united states as one all the number of fans 
in Sweden as one. All the number of fans in US as one. Now, how do I know that that's the case? Look at the example ALS gave us here. Look at it. USA, look at the number of fans. Sweden, look at the number of fans. Finland, look at the number of fans. United Kingdom, look at the number of fans. Right? Good. So, now, what does that mean? Remember what we said, or what the person that answered the question now just said. He said we need two columns. And what are the columns? Of course, for we to to create a table based on original number of fans, we need to first select those two columns. Select what? We need to first select origin. Then next, of course, you know, we are. what are we collecting? We are based on the origin, we want to get the total number of fans. Do you get? So, based on USA now, you want to get all the fans in USA. Based on Sweden, we want to get all the fans in Sweden. Now, how can we achieve that? We can only achieve that using our uh, built-in SQL function, which is what? Sum. So, by the time we now say sum, now sum of what? Of course, let's go back to the table and see. Sum of what? Sum of fans. This is what? One, two, three. So, let's check. If you look at it, one, two, three, you can see. Uh, sorry, the ID is not here. So, we have one is the ID. We have two and we have three. This one, two, two and three. 2 and 3. So you can see that the fans is actually the number of fans. It's not like the name of fans or whatsoever. It is. So here now, what do you want to do? We want to sum all the fans together. Let's confirm. Is, is it fans on the table? Is it? Yes, it's plural. Fans. We are correct. So we want to sum all the fans. But now, remember they want it to appear as NB fans. Number of fans. So it means let it let it sum up these fans, but let it sum it up as nb underscore fans because that's what they want it. That's how they want it to appear here. Now look at what they say. Write SQL script that ranks country origin of band ordered by the number of non-unique fans. Right now, if you look at very well, you find out that there's a form of order here. The highest comes first, followed by the next highest. Followed by the third highest, like that, like that. So it means they are, they are this thing. Uh, order the order is by descending order. You get. So now, one thing you should understand is, anytime you are using a built-in function, you must introduce grouped by. Right. So here, what building function did I introduce? I introduced sum, and sum is expected to return a value. So it means I must introduce grouped by. Are we getting it so of course select origin some fans as nb fans now we need to specify from which table of course is from our metal bands if you look at it if you open up the table look at it create table metal bands so that's actually the table name so metal metal bands right now remember what i told you so far you are calling in a built-in function that we sum or count because count is also a built-in function there are other built-in functions like that so so far you are calling a built-in function that we calculate do a form of calculation and return a single value to you you have to use your grouped by now in this case what are we grouping it by this sum is group it should be grouped by what remember what we said it should be grouped by what the countries and what is representing the countries in this our sql script of course is the what is the is the what is the origin that's representing the countries because this is one two three four five but of course yeah they are not putting in the id so they, they are starting from band name so we have one two three four right so if we do one two three okay this one is the id they went and put the id at the middle not at the beginning so we still have one two three four five united kingdom so we want to we want it to be grouped okay look at it band name yes fans yes formed yes id yes origin good so we want it to be grouped by origin that's for united kingdom sum all the fans return the value for us for sweden sum all the fans so that is why we have to group it by the origin so we have group by origin and then the next one 
Remember, what did they say? Ordered by the number of fans. Of course, we already have number of fans here, which is NB dash fans. And based on what I said, right? Based on if you look at what ELS give us here, you find out that they are in descending order. That's from the highest to the lowest. So in that case, we have we have order. Let me use capital letter. We have order by number of fans, which is what in descending order. So we have DSC. Now, are we done with our uh, SQL expression? Yes, of course we are done. Then we put our semicolon. Now, right? Let me go back to the table. I want us to write another code. And this time around, to mimic this code, uh, like what I want to do it is so that to drive the explanation to you. Let's say now, what I want to uh, do, let's go back to the table. Okay? So, let's say what I want to do now, isn't it? I don't think all the band's name, I think all the band's name are, not, are actually uh, different. So, uh, we can't go by that. But I'm looking at, uh, is there, okay, I think style. Some of them have the same style, right? I think some of them have the same style. That's why the fact the style is 701. And if you look at it, it's more like they are in between commas. But let's say now, what we want to do is to count the number of uh, of fans, right? Based on style. Now, not based on formed, not based on country now, but based on the style. Now, how do we do it? It's as very simple. What do we do? In this case, we'll say select the two things we need is what is style and then what sum of what fans because we need some of fans based on style now right now the sum of fans we want it to be as what number of fans right of course from what from which table from our metal band table now of course grouped by Remember, because we are grouping it based on origin here, uh, the sum is based on the origin. For each country, we are getting the fan for each country. But in this case now, we want to get the number of fan for each style. So that's why we have to group it by style. Right? So we have group by style. Then finally, if you like, you order it. If you like, you don't order it. You understand so this is an overview so just put it at the back of your mind so far you are using inbuilt function like sum inbuilt function like uh count or some other inbuilt function or like average too you have to bring or introduce this grouped by most especially if you are trying to get the sum or the average of a particular group in the whole table so you have to go by that method so i don't know is there any question concerning this before we run our script and confirm any question okay can you repeat okay so where should i start from the second <coughs> the second part okay the second part okay 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 now good I'll open another uh, script, right? Let me just name it Vim uh, Test um, dot SQL. Yes, let me do it this way. So now, this is our table, right? If you see what ALX asks us to do here, this one, they say we should okay. Look at it, right? SQL script that ranks country origins of bands. Now, if you open this one, the table, look at the origin. What is the origin? United Kingdom, Sweden. So it means the origin is based on country. The countries those bands are coming from, right? So they say, ranks country origins of bands ordered by the number of fans. So now, we want to ra rank each of the origins of the bands, but the ranking now is based on the number of fans. You know how we used to do now? We say, ah, the video get plenty fans past whiskey. No, whiskey get plenty fans past the video. You know, at times we tend to rate people. Or maybe you see somebody on Twitter, someone, this guy, he get one million followers. And that person will be like, ah, this one, you have uh, 500,000 followers, you understand? So, the ranking now is based on the number of fans, right? So, they want us to rank the country origin, 
based on number of fans. So me, in this case, I now changed it. I now say, instead of ranking the origin of bands, why not let us rank the style? Because we also have style here, you understand? Why not let's rank the style still based on what? The number of fans. So in that case, if we are run, uh, 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 ranking the style based on the number of fans, it means in this case, what we are going to have here, of course, this one should be our comment. So in this case now, of course, first of all, we have select. What are we selecting? We are ranking style. Remember, we are ranking style based on number of fans. Do you get? So the style comes first. And you make sure it's the same spelling with what is on your table. Yes, it's the same spelling here. Style. So we, we need style. Next, what do we need? We need the number of fans that belongs to a particular style. Right? So that's where some comes in. So for every style, give us the total amount of fans that subscribe to that style. Then we have what? We have fans because that's the spelling in the table. Look at it here. Where is it? Look at it here. Fans. F-A-N-S. Now, of course, ALX now say we should name it as number of fans. So in that case, since we are naming it as number of fans, we say NB underscore fans. Mind you, sorry, we use us. Mind you, we don't need to name it NB underscore fans. If we leave it like this, it will still work correctly. The only issue is that instead of showing NB fans here as the name, is going to show some fans as the name so that's just the only problem so now as nb fans underscore fans now the next one what then remember now to do uh, guys i say one thing you need to understand is that anytime uh you are working with a table right the next thing is you have to indicate from which table that's why you always have the keyword from of course, the table we are working on is from Metal Bands. Is here. If you look at the table information, look at it here. Create table Metal Bands. So that's the name, Metal Bands, right? So now we now say we want to rank style based on the number. So sorry, give me some minutes. Yes, good evening, ma. Sorry, please, guys, just give some minutes. Sorry, uh, guys, I'm back. Oh, God of mercy. Please, if you should not mind this, my code uh, completion or this codium on my Vim. That's how I used to behave. <laughs> yeah, so so please, uh, don't don't mind it. Okay, so now, um, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? So, the next thing, and I'll say, okay, since you are returning a single value, right? Now, want to know by what should that single value be returned it should be by style so it means we have to group it by style right so that's where we now have group by style right then according to alx now they say we should order it of course you know they want the ones with the highest fan to be first followed by the ones with the lowest fan so in that case, we are actually ordering, but is in descending order. I wish they say from lowest to highest. We don't even need to order because by default, your this thing will always be ordered in ascending order. But because they say from the highest to the lowest, so it means we have to order by, uh, order by, and be 
fans because the ordering is by number of fans how much number of fans they have then of course in the same order because we want it to be from the one with the highest fans number of fans to the one with the lowest number of fans so so this is like what it is um so i don't know does anybody have any question Everybody is just quiet. Oh God of mercy. So hope I'm safe. Hope I'm safe. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you are. Okay. So now, this one, this is where they ran the script. And if you look at what they did, they introduced these two things. Now, why they introduced these two things is to limit the results. Because if you run this script without these two things, is going to give you a very long list so it's more like they limited it if you look at it you just have one two three four five six seven eight nine so they limited it by this this one and it's a good thing so that at least somebody's um timing i will not just be filled so now i will change i will add sudo to my sql sudo and then run it so so now you can see usa we have this Sweden, we have this. Finland, we have this. United Kingdom, like that, like that, like that. So, in fact, let me even <laughs> let's try something. We have our test file, right? Now let's try to run it for the test file and see if it work. <laughs> uh, I know it will not work because of due to the fact that we don't have just a single uh, this thing. That's just the issue. That if you look at the the dance, right, the style. You can see that we have several style in comma are you seeing it so we don't just have a single style if not ah it would have worked so we have test dot sql oh it worked wow you see i never knew <laughs> so do you guys see what i'm saying so you see it started with the style with the highest number which is death wait but this would have sense so how we dead have is number for god's sake ha that's serious oh, this way so i don't know do you do you get do you understand the whole stuff now yeah okay okay so so that's it for for this now uh, the next one it says Write the SQL script that lists all bands with clam rock, right? Now, as their main style, ranked by their long, long, longevity, right? So, are you seeing what is happening now? List all bands with what? Clam rock as their main style, ranked by longevity. Requirement o already we have imported this already, so we don't need to import it again the second time. Then next, you see column names must be band name and lifespan. That's why here you are seeing band name and lifespan. So they say in years until 2022. They say please use 2022 instead of this. Right now, this is a function. This is a built-in function in my SQL, and what this one means is core date simply means current date so let me show you how it works now if i come here and run this core date it will give us the current date what, what is that saying okay sorry select i need to use the word select for it to work select core date so do you see today is 23rd march 2024 so either you use core date or you use it in full current underscore date. If you do this right and you do current underscore date, it will return the same thing to you. Current date. So by them saying year now, what they are saying is that they want to get just the year in this current date. So by the time you do select, I just need the year inside of the current date. Look at what it will give us. What did you see? 2024. If it's just the month we need, right? From here, we just change this year to month. You can see 
is giving us the month, which is the third month. And if it's just the day we need, it's just for us to come here and then we say give us the date or the day. Sorry. Now what do you see? Twenty third. So now they are now saying instead of you doing this because they know once you do this, it means you will be referring to the present year, which in this our case it will be twenty twenty four. So instead of using this, they want you to instead just use 2022. Right? So they now say you should use attributes formed and split for computing the life spam. So let's check. Let's go back to our table. Now they say form. Yes. We have formed and we have split. Right? So if you check one, two, three. So one, two, three. So for this one, this is the year it was formed. Right? And for the split, is having a null value. Now, why is he having a null value? It's because the the band have not yet splitted. They are still together. So, that's why here is null. Because the split is just to carry the year that the band maybe fell apart. So, in this case, they have not fell apart, falling apart yet. So, it's null. Now, but if you come to the second record, you now find out that, okay, the band was formed in 1990. And it was split in the same 1990. Are you seeing it? This one was formed in this, it has not been splitted yet. This one was formed this, was still split this. This one was, was formed this, has not splitted yet. This one was formed in this, 1983, and it split in 2011. So, that is what they are trying to say. That Because for us to know how long the band lasts, or how long they were together, we have to compare when they started and when they eventually split. And in a situation where they did not split, right that's what elx that's where elx are now trying to say we should now use this 2022 instead of using this to get the current year that we are in presently now so now let's according to our president let's hit the ground running sorry according to press some people president it's not my president All right, so I don't know who have an idea of how can we go about this. Well, who has an idea? So remember, we have band name, right? Is so it? we have to select the band name. Good. Make sure you select the band name there. Yeah. Good. So we have select, isn't it? Now they yeah. say band name. Is that how it appears on the table? We need to check. Yes, that is how it appears. And yeah. right beautiful so we have select band name right then now yeah. what do we have okay. Before I we now have lifespan but if you check on this table do we have anything like lifespan no but but now if you look at what they say Write the SQL script that lists all bands with clam rock as their main style, ranked by their longevity. Now, and of course, lifespan, for us to calculate the lifespan, they say we should look at the what? Formed and split, right? So it means what we are going to do is to always subtract our split from our formed. Do you get? Do you guys get? So now, yeah. of course, the next one, after band name, the next thing we need is lifespan. But lifespan is not here. So it means whatsoever thing we have to put there, we now have to use it as lifespan. And what are those two things? Split minus what? Minus formed. Now there's an issue. What is the issue we have? For this one now, that in the formed, we have 1975. In the split, we have null. If we do null minus 1975, hope you know it will return null. True or false? Ah, now no answer me again. Because, you know... True, true. True, good. Because this one now is having a data type of ye. If you look at it, it's having a data type of Y, right? The both of them. But in a situation where this one is null, it means there's no even data at all. So there's no data type. So in that case, 
that's where ELX now brought up with this. You understand? Based on okay, for those that have not splitted, the value will always be null. So in that case, instead of using the null, use 2022. You understand? So that's where we now have that okay. Oh, if null, right? Split and then 2022. Now, this is what is happening here. If null, right, don't take the null value. Instead, take the other value that is not null. This one is a function. It's, a, it's an SQL built-in function. Let me let me even Google search it so that you see it. Um, if null SQL function. So look at what they say. The SQL general function evaluates whether expression minus one is null. It's never returned expression minus one if the expression is null. Are you seeing it? Expression two is returned. So now let me show you. Let me even show you the syntax so that you see how it looks like. Uh, let, let me use a hand W three schools. So look how it works. If null, then it collects two values. So it will check if this first value is null. It will never take this first value. It will come and take the second value instead. When a situation where this first value is not null, is this first value that it will take. So what we are trying to say here is that, okay, now when you find out that the split value is null, please take 2022 and use 2022 instead. So it's more like you are celebrating your birthday, right? Let's okay, you have two people. One is dead. Let's say one died uh, 2020. One is still alive. You know, if you want to calculate uh, how long the other one that died stayed, you know, it will always be 2020, the year he died, minus the year he was giving birth to. And if you still want to calculate the, the year of this one that is still alive, it's still the year he is presently, minus the year he is giving birth to. So that is what is happening here, right? Want to know how long have this band held together? So, of course, it will always be either the year they splitted that's the year they stopped being a band or in a situation where they are still together we have to calculate it based on the year the present year which ALS say we should use 2022 instead of using the current year that we are in you understand so in a situation where it's check and i said ah this band have not splitted yet oh okay oga use 2022 for us moku know how long use the year where would they when a situation where you now check, you now saw that ah, these people actually split it. Oh, they split it like twenty, like twenty fourteen. It will now pick the twenty fourteen and use instead. So apart from this function, there's another function also that is called qua qua calas ba qua s c e. Uh, I don't. Let me confirm the spelling. Good. It does almost the same thing, right? But it's just that this one takes more than two values it can take as much as much as five six seven eight values all right so that is it and it can take more than one type of value like this as you can see this is an integer but this is a string you understand ba? so now let's go back to this okay what do you want to do of course the lifespan will be the split year the year they split it which this one is handling right then minus the year they were formed if you look at the table here is the table you see that it's formed it is the it is the correct spelling f-o-r-m-e-d why for the other one split this is the correct one split so now remember they say we should use life spam as the 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 label so we have to use it as life spam right now from where of course from our table and what is the name of our table metal bands right now look at it what did they say they say that list all band with clam rock so if you look at the table now you find out that most of the bands they have more than one style and each of those style right are being uh, uh, separated using comma for instance this one have three new wave of british heavy and heavy extreme progressive progressive rock progressive heavy bay bay area trash trash heavy hard rock so now for we to 
get this glam rock right we need to check and make sure the glam rock is within whatsoever we are going to have here so even if what the dancing style they have is 10 we have to check if glam rock is among the 10 so in that case now of course it's more like a condition a, a, a condition so we say where style of course that's the name on the table if you check it look at it style so where style is what style is like isn't it now if we just say we decide to come here and just say g lamb rock like this right it's not as if we are wrong but based on the information we have here we are going to be wrong why because most of them have more than one style so but you saying this is more like you're expecting just a single value that is clam rock so what we need to do is to be able to check in between the values for everyone we should be able to check in between all the values is there anything like clam rock so for that sake we need to use our percentage so percentage here before and percentage after so what it means is this one simply means between now if you just put percentage right if you just put percentage at the beginning what it simply means is that probably you are you are expecting something at the beginning having this if you put it only at the end it means you are expecting something probably at the end you have this but now since it can be at the beginning it can be at the middle it can be at the end is better you put you did like this so this one is more like you're saying irrespective of the position of g clam rock so far you see g clam pick it are we i don't know are we getting it hopes i never to explain explain something i don't go miss explain yeah 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 oh, thank you. Thank you. oh no it's okay also i just wanted to add that the percentage <coughs> sorry okay it, it also accounts in the sense, say, let's say, uh, if uh, glam rock, let's say, instead of, let's say it is the glam rock, right? Yes. And so, someone types uh, in, in your data, yes. there's, let's say, someone has typed the V glam rock. Yes. Right? Yes. It, it takes care of that V. V. That percentage mm -hmm. that you put in before and after, it takes care of that V. So it creates that white space for you. Good. so it's also like when when you are cleaning data in a sense it also helps in cleaning data yeah. to give you at least a, a proper order of data that are looking for that is good. Okay. so you guys see another use case of it so just just in case so put it at the back of your mind now thank you so much thank you sir for that all right so let's see did they say we should group order yes of course they say ranked by their longevity so it means the higher number or the highest number should come first followed by the others so and what is that represented is represented by lifestyle um lifespan sorry i say lifestyle <laughs> so of course we have order by then life span and is in what of course because we want the higher one to be at the top and the lower one to be at the down so of course it will be in descending order so are we done with our sql statement yes of course then we put our semicolon then we can save our script so in this case now of course we have done this already to import the database we have the database already next is to run our script so here i'm going to use the sudo so you can see alice copa cooper 58 this 34 33 32 I, although i don't know why the, this is not corresponding with this i suspected that probably when they did this it was at around 2020 around 2020 yes because with this 2022 now you see we're having two more years on each of them so probably they did this around 2020 yes so any is there any question I just want to do, uh, let's say, an addition. Can we go back to the SQL file? Okay, okay. Okay, okay. So, uh, I realized that you used where style like, right? Yes. So, the like function, 
it's it's it also has a let's say let me put it this way uh, a delimiter or it's so basically yeah. so it says like glam rock yes so if there's another star yes which has let's say glam rock uh let's say glam rock band like let's say we, there's another something addition to glam rock glam rock right yes. Which is a different style on its own. Yes. But so far, because we've used like it will pick it up. Okay. Okay. Wow. I hope I hope you are also getting that. Yes. Yes. So the, the data we have, the data we have, has only glam rock. Glam rock. Yes. You understand? Has only glam rock. But in the in the case where you have data, which has a star with the name glam rock as part of something yes let's say glam rock reggae reggae okay okay yes so glam rock reggae is one style as glam rock reggae, reggae. it's one style okay. but with the use of like it will pick it up as part of it okay okay okay, mm-hmm. okay. so so we can so in a sense we can use finding sets okay, okay. <laughs> so we can use finding sets uh but when you use find finding set you have to add an if not style to it to it okay yes wow uh-huh. you, have, you have to add an if not if style, not style. Okay. so we can also take note of that in future okay. when we are we are looking at data we, we can have it that way too that way okay mm-hmm. no, no problem at least I've, I've 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 taken note of that thank you so much mm-hmm thank you so um all right thank you for that so let's let's move to the first one so for this one this one is talking about uh a trigger creating a trigger right so uh i was in my study i've not dealt with this one very well so uh i don't know probably i will skip this and move to uh functions procedures uh, because i don't really settle down and explain this trigger i'm not like yet satisfied with uh, how much i have i know it so that's i'm i'm skipping it yeah so just but just keep it at the back of your mind right and then uh let's just come to procedures and and then functions let me see this procedure okay this also procedure is there anything okay create an index all right so now these procedures you find out that uh, elx they combine functions and pro- procedures together so what are procedures and what are functions now functions and procedures are almost the same thing the only difference is that function is always expected to return a single value out of you can have maybe thousands of data billions millions of data but once you are using a function, it simply means you are trying to say, okay, out of all these millions of data, out of all these thousands of data, I just need one value. Why, when you are dealing with procedures, procedures is mostly when you are performing an operation on a table. That operation, it could be an update, it could be an insert, insert, it could be insert, it could be update, it could be delete. It could also to be return it could also to return a particular data or a particular information still so that is what a uh, procedure but mostly when it comes to returning just a single data they use function that's why the fact you can still uh, use uh, this thing uh, what are they called procedure for it but mostly if you are returning just a single uh, information they actually love using your your this thing uh, what are they calling it function so let's let's look at it <sighs> right so let's let me go back to this now how do you create a procedure okay yeah to begin with how you create a procedure you use the word create procedure then followed by the other statement yes so let's let's look at this what did they ask us to do the same Write a SQL script that creates a stored procedure add bonus that adds a new correction for a student. Procedure add bonus is taking three inputs 
you know, I explain it, that procedure is just like function. So it means they have the ability to take in parameters. Good. So it's taking three in, uh, input in this order. User ID, a user's dot ID value. You can assume user dash ID is linked to an existing users. Project name, a new already exists project. If no project dot name found in the table, you should create it. Score, the score value for the correction. So now, let's go back to writing a procedure. So what's the name of our file? We have six dash bonus SQL. So Vim six dash bonus. So this one now, what we have is comment. So now who can help us? Does anybody have an idea? Procedures, procedures. So should I like map it out for you guys first, the structure of a procedure before we move on? Or should I just code? Or should I like map it out on a note so that you have like at least an understanding of what it is? I think mapping it out will be beneficial for our... All right, all right. So, if you are not if you are thinking of a procedure, just like I said, procedure it is somehow similar to a function, but they have their own differences. Procedures is used to carry out operations like insert, like update, like delete. Yes, and it can also can also return a single or more tuple value or values instead. So if you have to, the structure how a procedure looks like is that first of all, you create the procedure. Then follow, you have name of procedure. Right? And then inside the name of procedure, you can now declare the input types. Now, these input types of procedures, right? It could be in, it could be out, and it could be in out. Now, when you declare a variable as in, when is actually a variable that the procedure itself is taking in? If it's a variable that the procedure will be taking out, that's when you declare it as out. Then in out is when the variable can be taken either in or out. But a majority of the time, what you'll be using is in. Now, it does not mean you have to implement this. In a situation where you forget, maybe you forget to add the in or out or in out, by default, it's going to use in. Your procedure will take in in by default. So, create procedure, name of procedure, the parameters. And as you declare it, is it in, out, in, out? Then you have name of parameter. Then followed by type. That is the parameter type. Is it an int? Is it a, a varchar? That's a string. Is it a float? Is it a, a numerical? It all depends. Uh -huh. So after procedure, now before even procedure, there are some things that you can do if you want, right? But those ones are not really uh, necessary uh, for some of them, like to check if a procedure exists or not. If it exists, if it does not exist, then go ahead. That's maybe you are trying to avoid uh, an error from running your, your script or so. Uh -huh. Then another thing you need to do is to remove your delimiter now let me show you something about this delimiter now if i say um uh, show okay let me see show okay yeah show tables right now of course once i don't include a a, a delimiter you will see that my table my sql will just keep on going until i in, i bring in a delimiter which is a semicolon right now, in a situation where 
I want to change my delimiter. Instead of using semicolon, I want to be using another thing. Delimiter, like this. Uh, it's delimiter, sorry. It's the way I'm using Nigerian tongue to pronounce it. That does not make me to miss the spelling. So, now let's check. Now, by the time I say delimiter, and I did this. Now, what I've successfully done is to change the delimiter. Now, if I say show tables, and I use semicolon, nothing will happen. Look at until I use this one, because this is what I've redefined my delimiter to be. So until I use this one, my statement will not end. So, do you, okay, sorry, I used four. Do you get? So, now, it's the same thing too with this one. Because I'll be making use of that, what are they calling it? I'll be making use of that semicolon inside of my procedure. So I don't want anything to break, so I'll first redefine my delimiter. Now you can use anything just like I say. If you like, you can use hash hash. If you like, you can use uh, dollar percentage percentage. If you like, you can use dollar dollar. If you like, you can use at at. If you like, you can use this this like anything anything just anything. <laughs> yeah. So after uh, you must have created your parameter, then the next thing is your begin. Your begin statement. So now in between your begin and your end statement. What comes now is your SQL statement. You understand? Because your procedure, of course, you have create, you redefine your delimiter, you have create procedure, you have begin, then in between begin and end, you have your SQL statement. So this begin, I don't know if it's by force if it's like very necessary but i know it's important due to the fact that it will show the person reading your script where it all started and where it ended i don't know if 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 you guys get uh what i'm saying and and then after this end of course you will now introduce your delimiter in this case this is the delimiter we used so in this end you introduce this delimiter as well then of course once you are done everything you have to change it back to the normal delimiter which of course is this this is the normal delimiter for my sql so you change it back to the normal delimiter once you are done so this is the structure of a procedure and this sql statement could be anything it could contain loops it could contain conditional statements i believe you all know what loop is you all know what conditional statement is that's your if your if else it could even contain a switch statement and it could contain several sql statement it, it inside just this one you can have maybe insert statement you can have delete statement you can have update statement all is just based on what you want to do uh -huh. based on your target what you want to do and all that so now let's go back to our coding right and then here you see right the sql script that create a stored procedure add bonus you see they gave us the name of the procedure it said that adds a new correction for a student say procedure add bonus is taking three inputs so now first of all we will redefine our delimiter, right? Delimiter. And then, me, I will use this. And, but you can just, like I said, you can use anything. So, delimiter. Now, the next thing is to create a uh, procedure. So, I will do create. Of course, why I'm not checking whether uh, the this thing, the, uh, the procedure exists or not is because they did not actually give us that instruction anywhere here. So, there's no, actually, there's no point of doing that. So I'll just go straight ahead. Create procedure, right? And then what is the name of the procedure? This I should create. Add bonus. Now, this delimiter. What and what is it taking as uh, input? You see, it's taking what user ID, project name, and then score. Now, if you look at each of these one, is actually taking them in is input that's why i see here they use input if you remember what i was explaining here where is it uh you know i say it could be in it could be out it could be in out so more like it could be input it could be output it could be in output so these ones all of them are input so it means we have to declare all of them using the word in so here now we now have the keyword we have in now in what they say user 
underscore id now what is the type of user underscore id did you talk about the type of course user underscore id should be an int uh, id it should be an int so we have int now what is the next parameter is project name so it's the in in what is the project name project underscore name right of course this one since the project name we should be expecting a string so we have vacha vacha and then we have 255 then the final one of course is our score so we have in of course since it's score we are expecting an integer int now this is the declaration of our procedure then follow by what from here follow by the begin statement so next we have our begin sorry let me use capital letter we have our begin now this begin now let's now check what did they really uh, uh want us to do they say write sql script that create a stored uh, procedure add bonus of course this is stored procedure add bonus that adds a new correction for a student so like who can help us how can we achieve this You have to set the project's ID first. Okay. Okay. Uh, you, you set uh, at project IDs, project underscore ID. Then in it, we select ID from projects. Okay. Okay. It's project underscore name. So, can you guide me in the coding? Uh, Okay. Do, do you understand how I'm going about it? Right? Okay. Hello? Hello? Yes, I'm listening. Ah. Hello. Yes. Um. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Okay. So I'm saying you you, you set the project ID. So that will be uh, set. Okay. Uh, at project underscore ID, right? Set. Set. Yeah. Yes. At. at yes. Use the uh, at. No. 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 Okay. Uh, like this. Yes. Okay. Project underscore ID. Okay. Uh, then you yeah it was i think yeah i think the same thing from here yeah, select id from project where name is equal to project underscore name okay at project id we are like this equals what i okay i think my so project id equals let me use uh, so that, no, okay, yeah, so like no yes yes okay then uh, select it's basically what your listener suggested okay what the ai yeah. suggested yeah yeah it's okay. basically what your yeah, suggested. Select, yeah. select id uh, right yeah. from projects yeah. from projects okay uh, yeah name is yeah, name. Project, uh, yeah is equal to project underscore name project underscore name right yeah okay, okay. yeah but okay okay uh -huh. okay so then yeah uh, but then I, I i had an if statement okay of yes so if so is, if right this no. right yeah yeah okay if at if at project id okay yes no okay then uh, yes no okay. then we do the insertion we do inserts Okay. But, uh, then this, this your AI is good power. <laughs> so <laughs> so is that it? Uh, yeah. 
Et tu peux dire. Ok. Name. Name, yeah. Mm -hmm. Close brackets. Value. Ok. Then project name, yeah. Values, then project name. Right? Yeah. yeah. Ok. But, I don't know, your indentation. Ok, I don't know, probably. Maybe I, I prefer those indentations. Ok, you want me to identify? Yeah, yeah. So, is this one ok like this? No, no, no. So, if a set are the same I same line so you can yeah so the sets move back move forward a little okay the this one on the same line like this no no go like back this? go back uh okay if not one two three four five line five okay sets one be, okay right after okay, okay 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 i should bring this one like this yes uh -huh. yep then what of this so if pa, 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 like this it's insert no 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 okay. go back to pencils yes then insert moves okay like uh -huh. this yep okay next uh, uh, next indent okay another one insert yeah, yeah for the insert yeah. like this type in my code uh, yeah Okay. Yeah, that's too much. Oh. It's too much. You've gone, you've gone double, or you went one. Eh, it's one. You know, it's my is my vim. That's how my vim okay. is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then, yeah. So sets at yes. So basically, right, your AI is actually writing everything for us. Okay, it's writing everything. For us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. Then and if yeah. So back. So back. Yeah. So and if and if right if yeah, yeah insert into corrections then we do the questions that they are looking for okay that's the same as it is showing you like this yeah okay. basically the same thing so like this yeah so score. It's now... that's project id score yeah then we end your delimiter okay. yes so we have end like this yeah and then yeah. our delimiter. delimiter yeah and then we go back we take the back our default delimiter all right <laughs> thank you exactly thank you so this is what is happening right let me let me uh go back to this so look at what they say user id yeah. users dot id value thank you so much you can assume user dash id i need I, I, I need your ai and uh, no problem I, I even i think i was okay no problem i will drop it on the group and then i'll drop some okay. videos on how you can incorporate it into vim as well and okay yes it's, okay. it's called codium it, actually it. oh okay it's called okay. codium let me let me send out the name so you can then for those using vs code you can just go and download it as a plugin it's very very good i won't find it on more VS code. Useful. It, uh, it, it also works on vs code yes it works on vs code then I will drop oh, link okay. where you can incorporate it into Vim or Emacs as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Thank you, sir. So, user ID is linked to an existing users, and then project name, a new or already exist project. If no project dot name found in the table, you should create it, and then score. So, looking at our code now, you know I told you a procedure. You create it. The name of the procedure using the keyword create procedure the name of your procedure then the parameters here they give us three parameters user id project name and score of course i told you that so far the uh, the parameters will act as an input you always use the keyword in and then this one will be the data type of the parameter so which one this is int for this is virtual for this is int also so now here they say set at project id now i know if some of you guys look at this art, you'll be wondering, ah, what is this art? What is this art? When you say art, right, in MySQL, there's what they call local, local, and is it global variables? Or is this scope variables? Uh, okay, uh, I think the local and block variables. So when you have a local variable right 
I think it's, it's local and block. Uh, is it all local and global variables, right? I just sorry, yo, let me let me be sure. Let me be, let me be, I'll come and lie for you. <laughs> I call a life for you people. <laughs> so please uh let me be sure. Uh let me be sure so that it will not be as though um variables or show your face. Good. Okay, it's local thank you and user variables. Yes, yes, local and, and user variables. So when you talk of local variable, they use the keyword declare. So when I say something like this, declare my local variable so that is how they declare a local variable why user variable how they declare it is that they use at so for user variable what they use is the keyword at why for local variable what they use is the keyword declare and of course for local variable you have to include the type is it int is it varchar is it float you have to indicate the type but for user variable you don't need to indicate the type at all you don't need to you understand and you precede it with the keyword at so if i'm to use this one as a user variable it's going to be at my underscore user underscore variable so and you don't need to declare the type of the variable now what's the difference when you talk about talk about local uh, variable is only available within the script you are running it is only available on the script you are going to run it is not available to the external environment but using this variable this user variable is available for the external environment so why you see here we have to use at for all this most especially see the project id and all that is due to the fact that look at what they say they say user id a user's id value you can assume user id is linked to an existing users so is is linked to an existing table within somewhere 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 but not just something we can actually see something like that so that's why we have to use this uh at where is it uh, this at uh, so it's not as if it's style it's not as if we are we are doing style here so you see here we are now setting the project uh, id and project id how do we set it you select id Rem you remember your select keyword in um, sql so we select id from projects now we are taking projects to be the table you know you always select from a table so it means project is a table now we are what we are name is now the project name right so it's more like we are picking the id of the project name that's what we are we are doing here this statement is just for us to get the id of our project name where's our project name our project name will be one of the things that will be passed in to the procedures and then here we are now setting this one as a user variable so now after we must have gotten the value of project id the next is what to check whether it is null or not because that was the instruction they gave here if you check it they say um user id project name a new already exists project if no project or name found in the table you should create it so we are now checking does this thing exist so we now say if at project id is null then right insert into projects name values so now we are now assessing the name field in the project are you getting me we want to want to insert a record inside of our table project because our project is the table right and then we want to insert into the name field of that project or of that table instead and then what are we inserting we are inserting values the values what project name of course the project name will be passed into this so in a situation where this does not exist right so then i say set at project id equal to last insert id so this one should be a function a built-in function and because uh, when i was studying on the built-in function along the line i i stopped but i believe this last insert id is a built-in function is a function that return 
the the last uh this thing uh what are they calling it the the last id of the table i'm very sure and uh, that should be the case i'm very sure that should be the case so uh, let's even check it out let's not be that i'm just uh speculating so last insert id right my sql so let's see what it is okay good i uh, thank god w3 school covered it so they say returns the auto increment id of the last row that has been inserted in a table so do you guys see it uh -huh. so that's what is happening here that's what is happening here last insert id you set the project id to that so and if of course anytime you are using uh, a conditional statement inside of your procedure or your function once you start it getting on getting to the end of that if statement you should always use and if very important don't forget that in fact even if you have if then maybe you have else you should always end the if or maybe you have if then you have else if right then you have else you should don't forget to always end the if and it should be on the same line with the if hey, don't forget that then insert into corrections values user id this and then this of course these corrections now it should be uh, uh name of our table if i'm not uh, mistaken uh, it should be name of the table and then the values we are inserting into the table user id which will be given here project id project id project id which is this one that we have got in here now yes then score of course this one this one will be if the project id is null but if the project id exists it will be taken from here to this place but in a situation where it's null it's going to be taken from here to this place then your score too will be passed into as a parameter so uh, this is hey what am i doing so this is what it is then always forget to always uh, remember to end your begin once you are done with your sql statement next you end what you begin then this one now will be what to exit from your interpreter my sql interpreter because you have redefined the delimiter to actually be these two things so you have to end it also with these two things and then this one you have to redefine your delimiter to the default delimiter my sql delimiter which is what your semi column so uh, so i don't know is there any question